What is going on? You are listening and watching Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. And I'm your host, Steve V, alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. I'm getting decorating advice in the chat. With your Tags podcast tea on. I love to see that. So no wait. Chi Chi's out there. Not sure if I said it, but it is episode <laughs> 370. I may have said that. On this Pride Month kickoff, it is June 1st, you guys, when we record this, the kickoff of Pride Month. So happy Pride, everybody. Super excited about that. Um, Cody, what are you looking forward to? We got a lot to talk about with Pride Month. And before we get into the download of all the drama associated with the month ahead and the celebrations. What are you, let's start off positive. What are you looking yes. forward to? People put in the chat, what are you looking forward to most this Pride Month? And we'll read it throughout the hour. But Cody, what is your most proudest moment that you're looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to being happy and gay and free and <laughs> living I'm my free. most authentic life. Yes. You know, you know, I love me a little ultranate moment. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to going to pride and partying and living a nice gay life, having kink, doing some kinky things at pride too. Yeah, well, one little known thing, it comes every Pride Month in here in, I was going to say here in New York, I'm in LA, but in New York <laughs> is Folsom East. Mm -hmm. And it's always the week before, the third week before Pride. And they do it typically in Chelsea near the Eagle, because then everybody runs over there. It's an outdoor leather Pride Fest, much, much smaller than Folsom San Francisco of course but still mm -hmm. fun in its own right and this year they're doing it on the iconic Christopher Street which typically is where pride oh. evolves and in, in enters to so I we've got to go Cody and I know we have another I'm, listener that we're gonna meet up with Jen so I can't wait that's, yeah, that's going to be part of my celebration. And yeah, I'm just looking to be, I feel like we've had a break and it's time to really kind of get out on the streets and get back to the old way of how we celebrated Pride with this long standing let, let loose. I mean, even the parade has been virtual for the last several years. So mm -hmm. it's crazy. Uh, what's daddy saying here? I'm going. He's, he's going to his first Pride in the county he lives in. First Pride, tell us the county. Oh, we want to know. Yeah, good for you and congratulations. Happy Pride to you. Yeah, let us know the county that you live in. We'd love that. Daniel says, looking forward to celebrating one year of marriage with my husband later this month. Wow, congratulations, Daniel. That's a huge feat and a great month to celebrate that in Pride Month, right, Cody? Right. I would love that. Maybe I'm thinking about getting married in June now, too. Hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> Juneteenth it up. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, we got to talk. We'll continue to read off what you're doing and what you're looking forward to this month. But Biden, President Biden, declares June LGBTQ Pride Month amid unconscionable attacks. His words, President Joe Biden declared June LGBTQ Pride Month while calling attention to the unconscionable attacks on the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex community. Quote, I often say that America can be defined by one word, possibilities. He wrote in a proclamation released this past Tuesday, this month we celebrate generations of LGBTQI people who have fought to make the possibilities of our nation real for every American. Mm -hmm. But he went on to condemn the recent slew of bills that have been targeting our community, rights considered by, by state legislatures nationwide. The annual number has skyrocketed in recent years just if you look about in 2018, there were 41 anti-LGBTQ bills okay. that were filed in state legislatures. We'll compare that to 238 in just the first three months of this year. And according to a new NBC News analysis conducted in March, as of this past May, there's more than 320 anti-LGBTQ bills that have been introduced. And this is according to the Human Rights Campaign. 
When you heard that, Cody, what did you think? We really need Pride this month. I mean, yeah. more than ever, forget about the hiatus. It's all the anti bills that we're seeing being, whether they go through or not, it's it's atrocious to me. Yeah. And it really means a lot to me that President Biden is actually vocalizing that uh, and putting his word behind LGBTQ people, but it's time for him to stand up and actually do something about it, especially with all these bills coming out. Um, until he actively stands up for Americans' rights and freedoms, it's kind of just lip service to me. So I really need for him to stand up and, and actually do something on that front. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I was at my friend's restaurant in Palm Springs this weekend called Asia mm -hmm. SF Palm Springs, and it's a transgendered uh, uh, restaurant. Essentially, they perform. It's larger than life, the original being in San Francisco. And they were telling me, the owners were telling me a really awesome story of the one of the transgendered hosts who she was saw this family mm -hmm. and one of and it what appeared to be a little girl and okay. when they when she went up to the little girl she asked her what's your name and she said olivia and actually she's a trans boy and she's okay. only 11 years old 11 years old trans Love boy it. and but was dressed up in her words in drag so an 11 year old, <laughs> an 11 year old, tra let me break it down, 11 year old trans boy that is dressing up in drag because he knew that he was going to Asia SF and it's all about creating an illusion. And when asked, well, what is your name? Because Olivia, oh, what's your trans boy name? He said, Olivia, why would I change my birth name? because that was my name and that to me is true progression and it's an 11 year old today who's teaching us how to evolve and so all those people that say children can't don't know who they are mm -hmm. this 11 year old olivia trans boy dressed up in drag is teaching us all about coming out and what it means to be trans in 2022 and i just yeah. think that was so progressive on so many levels i do too i think it's beautiful and it goes to show you that growing up in a household because i'm i'm just assuming but i feel like uh olivia's parents really raised them with a sense of self and gender exploration and it and it didn't demonize you know gender exploration for a child and it really shows in that child and and it further hits the point home that saying gay and exposing kids to different cultures does not diminish the child it allows them to blossom into a more thoughtful and kind and considerate individual you know a good friend of mine is raising their child at gender full is what he likes to say but uh but without any gender pronouns until the child he just had the baby maybe about two or three months ago. I don't know. I'm not good with baby dates or anything like that or mathing. You know this. <laughs> right. But gender neutral pro pronouns and they are, I can't wait to see how that child turns out and develops. So I just know that they're going to be amazing. What tell, tell us again what, what they're having you refer to the child as? They, them pronouns. Got it. They, them. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like they don't allow, because I was really worried because I bought a, a gift for the baby. I was mm -hmm. worried about not buying buying pink or blue or anything they say right. no buy anything you want really Good. but yeah. you don't have to really limit yourself to pink or blue or anything because they they like to they would like for the child to experience everything so that the child can make an informed decision so i love oh, it i love that yeah yeah and it's so easy to me i was around some older LGBTQ this weekend. Okay. And some of them were expressing to me how difficult it is to refer to people as they or them. And I'm like, it's really not that hard. I, you we get all, used I to it. With it too. I mean, yes, but at, I maybe mean, at first, but yeah. I think it's just like anything, you just get in the practice of it and you start saying yeah. they. I refer to people all the time as they, and yeah. even if they're not, if they're he or she, it's just if the more you train yourself and yeah. if the the intention behind it this is what they want to be referred to it's not that hard so i think we can yeah. learn it 
that quite that easy. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I agree with you, but I, I but I also have to say that don't beat yourself too much. Don't beat yourself up too much about it, even if you slip up a few times. I'm sure that people are perfectly gracious out there when it comes to pronouns and things of that nature. Then as long as you don't mean any harm by it, yeah, I'm sure right. that people will be understanding. So Exactly. Anybody saying anything before we move on? El Ray says the kids give us hope. And Daniel says he couldn't agree with that more. And Junior says, let's not forget that Joe Biden is only one person. We need to get those representatives out of our our areas by voting. He can't do it alone. And I agree. But I also added to that statement that he can do more than what he's doing. And that he's right. We all need to be doing more. So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's a funny clip that I'm going to put on tagspodcast.com. For those of okay. you who watch Hacks, the actress Meg Stalter, it, she plays the assistant to the agent, the main agent on Hacks. And she's the one that's always totally inappropriate. They're always in an HR meeting. She's hilarious. I believe she's queer, Meg Stalter. And last year, she did a whole thing on corporate uh corp- mocking corporations that celebrate pride month calling starting off the video with hi gay and it's all about this <laughs> butter churning shop back at the butter shop oh and yeah she's with another hi gay and it's it's so funny because it's this, it's essentially a take on we all know we're going to start seeing rainbow flags all over every city bank Girl. Every gap, every Old Navy moment, some we often welcome more than others. Some seem to come out of the woodworks and you're really down. <laughs> and it's a really funny moment. But she came out with that last year. This year's is even more hilarious. She's still at the butter shop where they make candles and somehow butter. They have, it's hilarious. And it's her reading a script as if she's this Heidi-like character. Did you watch it, Cody? Uh, I watched the the clip. Yes, it is so funny. It's hi, so gay. Funny. I was going to say gay. that to you. Hi, gay. Hi, <laughs> hi gay. <laughs> and she's so awkward. It is just, yes. it's, uh, it's classic. She's so hilarious to me. Right. She's clearly reading this script that as yeah. a corporation she's supposed to, but they're like a smaller corporation and they're, she's the rep for this doing it. And she can't, she doesn't read all of the script correctly. And it's even funny seeing that, including at the very end, she says, okay, I forget the guy that she keeps referencing on the video. She says, you can Uh turn the video off now. Yeah. Turn it off. off. Yeah. (laughs) It is hilarious. I love it. That's what Joe Biden sounds like to me. Does he? Oh my goodness. (laughs) Gosh, please help us. Well, let's move on. And I want to know what you think of this. Speaking of coming out on various levels, Gerard Carmichael, we talked about him recently. He has a really amazing Netflix special out right now that's really personal, where he comes out, uh, talks a lot about his family, talks a lot about being black and gay. Did you watch it, Cody? Yes, I did. What did you think? It's good. I really, I love Jared Carmichael. Carmichael. Yeah, really intimate, really raw. The jokes are hidden in there, but when you hear one, they're so hilarious and I love it so much. Um, Mm -hmm. Let me read you this really quick. Um, Finding this lock button. Yes. (laughs) And Gerard. Yes. So two weeks. So he was recently on the Ellen DeGeneres show and comedian Gerard Carmichael appeared on the program to talk about his latest special, Rathaniel, in which he came out as gay and the response he's been receiving. He was also recently on Showtime's Jesus and Miro. Did I say that mm-hmm. right, Cody? You Just got think? it, man. Okay, you got yeah. it. You, <laughs> you had a little Latin flair on it, but it was yeah. so good. <laughs> well, so he's recently talking. So he's on uh Jesus, is it Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. Like Jesus. Thank you. He was on <laughs> Jesus and Miro on Showtime recently, where he's referencing being on the Ellen show. Essentially, he was talking about a joke that they totally eliminated from the final edit of his 
of his guest appearance. He said, I did a joke on Ellen. They took that shit out, he revealed. It requires <laughs> context, though. And he said, it's Freudian in nature. But the punchline, without context, so here's the punchline, was okay. me realizing how much sexual desire is rooted in, well, like everything, from trauma to childhood experiences. And I said, I realized that if something on a guy doesn't remind me of my mother, I can't come. Well, <laughs> you can imagine how well that went over. He said Ellen looked at him like she was he was nuts. The the pulled back like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> and, it, and even Carmichael said on, and that wasn't he knew that it really wasn't fit for daytime television at two o'clock in the afternoon. It just sort of came out. Yeah. Besides the fact that it was inappropriate for Ellen. Okay. Did, Wait, did you hold on? Yeah, if what? Anybody, if anybody can relate, it should be Ellen, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's just the use of the word come. Oh, and, okay. All right. Okay. I get it now. And maybe the whole vibe of if somebody doesn't, rem if some part of the person you're having sex with doesn't remind you of your mother is cringeworthy to so many people. I get where he was coming from. Yes. If you know the backstory of he's right though because he on on the show on the showtime show he mm -hmm. went into further detail of how so many of us the trauma that we all suffer from and all yeah. the ways we develop in so many ways us gay men are so not immature but have so much to learn about our sexuality we may come out some of us come out later in life but yeah. we're always learning about our sexuality and a lot of it is deeply embedded and rooted oh, yeah. of our childhood and it takes a good therapy session or just some really good looking back on your own individual self to realize that's why i have that fetish that's why i like these kind of guys that's why i close up when Da, 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 da. And Tell me so, more. <laughs> yeah, I will. I could share a little bit more in a little bit on, okay. on my past childhood and where I got some of those issues. You know, I used to hang out with a lot of everybody who was always older than me. Everybody from I was on a gymnastic team. Okay. They were always older than me. And talk about the fantasies there. And just given what we wore. I was always hanging out with my sister who she's nine and a half years older than me. And so okay. I was always around older people. So I developed early on kind of a crush and a respect for my elders, but I always did well in, in groups that were my elders. I had daddy issues for a while there oh, too. Okay. Yeah. And liked all of that growing up, like older male representation as the daddy figure. But when you heard the the comment that Gerard said about mm -hmm. mother and coming, did you cringe? Did you see where he was coming from? Or what were your thoughts? So I love Gerard Carmichael, but this joke was just way, it was too much. It, it really was for daytime Too TV. much in general or too much for Ellen? Too much for daytime TV in general. I mean, I don't think he have, could have gotten away with it on Wendy Williams even. And that's a much more edgy show, I feel like. But yeah. it's still daytime TV. Uh, especially because there was no... Con like, we didn't hear the joke in context on... I, now you got me saying De De Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Jesus and Miro. <laughs> so I think it, it takes the proper setup and the proper context in order to actually get the joke and see where he's coming from. I think in the article it stated it was more about uh, what... Uh, what's that famous play? Oh my God, I gotta, gotta go back and take a look at, at it now. Just go on with your point, yeah. Yes, yeah. so um, I think that it, it takes proper context and I think it definitely comes down to him coming into his own and really exploring and being free in, in any given setting. It's something that he actually mentioned on... So... Talking about before, uh, he if he were about to live authentically when he was a kid or an adult, would he would know how to read the room a little bit better? I feel like, and I think that 
because he hasn't really explored his sexuality or his or his gender preference or what have you or any of that that he is is pushing those boundaries now and i think that and he's going to find his footing and he's going to be even more comfortable when it comes in in the future yeah i mean i think a lot of his humor right now i mean his special he's been around for a while apparently but the special that we are all talking about rothaniel mm -hmm. is all mostly based on him coming out his humor right now at least is all about coming out and being authentic and being an authentic black man he says further on in the, sh the showtime show i don't want to waste time because they were asking him so what wh how do you feel so comfortable being so real and raw and talking so intimately about things like your mother and your sexuality and he said quote i don't want to waste time everything just feels like a waste of a waste if you're lying lies beget lies and you yeah. become mirrored in it and uh, that part of it gave me context. Yeah, I think the joke probably fell flat on Ellen, but I think I really like where he's coming from these days. I like the authenticity that he's putting out there. It reminds me a little bit of who's the the rapper that we talk about all the time that's black and gay and out there. Lil Nas X? Lil Nas X in a different way. Little Nas is putting himself there. It's really pushing the boundaries of what it means to be black and gay or a person of color, at least. And he's in the comedian market, Gerard. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think this is his way. He's not holding back. If mm -hmm. you look at lesbian, Jojo Siwa is also putting herself out there as a young oh, yeah. lesbian, or I don't think she's lesbian. I think she's Might be queer or but with a, a girl and yeah. so I think they're unapologetic of who they are. These aren't examples that we saw back in my growing up days. And I think it's so refreshing. They may put their foot in their mouth at times, but that's okay. I think if yeah. they're not really hurting anybody and in his case, they just simply edited him out of the Ellen show. <laughs> but, and but he got a nice can... antidote for Jesus and Miro. Yeah, I wish he came on our show to <laughs> talk about it on our show. And let's but, send him an invitation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think I will. Yeah. What are the people saying before we move on? So the people are saying, first of all, they're roasting me in the comments right now uh -oh. for something I'm putting in, <laughs> which I love, but uh, you better watch yourself, bitch. Okay. <laughs> um, so Teddy says that he loves Jared Carmichael and that Jared Carmichael can get it. And I said, hit him up. And I love so that. So sexy. Yes, he's so cute. And that on Ellen, you can't say come on Ellen anyway. So right. that, that might be part of it. And El Ray says, thank God for a 10 second delay. And Blake says, even though she's off now, she should have she should have tried it and i'm not sure what the context of that was oh and then teddy says this is hilarious he says i don't he doesn't think that ellen has had an orgasm since 1997. i didn't say that that is a listener that said okay, that that's a listener we're blaming it on ellen. listenership yeah right exactly if you ever hear this ellen no i didn't say that okay yeah right but i it's did say that was listeners. the year i was born and so they started roasting me for that 1997. <laughs> well, I love it. Let's move on. In other news of people coming out, Isaiah Rashad, who we talked about, he's a hip hop artist, rapper. We recently talked about he was at Coachella. He mm -hmm. had a sex tape leak. But at Coachella, I don't know if you remember, but we were talking about how he addressed it on a huge screen where he confronted it, which I thought was really cool. But that's all yeah. he did. He just kind of a so what moment and I am who I am kind of thing. Well, recently he has addressed it. He hinted at it at his sex tape at Coachella, like I said. But in a recent Patreon exclusive interview with fellow rapper Joe button rashad mm -hmm. elaborated on how he identifies sex sexually and how the leak of the tape impacted him 
for the better. Quote, I'd say I'm sexually fluid, Rashad states, before Button produced for a further explanation. Quote, I'm still learning about it myself. I'm putting my head in the books to find out the basics of it. But basically, I'm not in full control when I walk into a room of who I'm attracted to. Okay. Just, just because I grew up in high school, I dated this type of person. In college, dated this type of person. Doesn't mean that as an adult, it's always going to be like specific. But I'm more so attracted to a personality and I'm attracted to the intellect. And just to give you a little bit of insight on what was on that sex tape, it was oral sex, Mm blowjobs between him and two other guys. So pretty explicit. But hey, yeah, I'm not mad. He's sexy too. (laughs) He is sexy. (laughs) I think he's taken... What do you call it? Taking lemons and made lemonade out of it because, oh, for sure. yeah, these days We're talking about it. Anybody that comes out that you know, there's going to be a video. That's why you got to know when you send those videos to somebody or when you send those clips that you know you never know. You might be the next, uh, but you're up on the screen and somebody's going to use that video towards That's you. But right. you got to own it. He's owned it. And I think saying that sexually fluid, that's where he's at. Joe Budden actually pushed him a little bit further. I don't know if you watched the clip. I'll post Mm -hmm. this on Tag's podcast. Like, what does that mean? And asked him a little bit about monogamy and so on and so forth. By the way, Isaiah has two kids from that he's raised teenagers now, I believe. But Mm -hmm. that doesn't that's just part of his family. It's not how he defines by any means. What did you think when you heard this? I think it's pretty cool. Of I of love Isaiah. this. Oh yeah, for sure. And I'm so glad that he's getting ahead of it and putting in the work to understand his sexuality. I think this show's underlying theme today is dis- self-discovery, self-sexual dis- discovery. And I yeah. couldn't be more proud of people um, that people are out there and just discovering more about themselves. Right stop like investigating your your sexuality and who you are as a person because it's ever growing and once you think that you are done you've only reached a midway point and there's always that next level to go so and i think that that's even more poignant for people of color and black people and i and it's a long time coming so props to this man i love him. yeah absolutely <laughs> i do too i'm yeah. really Taken by him. So I'm going to follow him and check out his music. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we've got some advice to give in a little bit. Just stay tuned for that. But I have to talk about this one story that you, Cody, offline were like, what? I don't believe this. When a man, (laughs) I'm jumping around, Cody, a man developed sudden amnesia after having sex with his wife, completely forgetting his own wedding anniversary. Anniversary. (laughs) party the day before and it's an actually you want to listen up because there's an it's an actual condition that can happen so a man visited a hospital after getting amnesia 10 minutes after having sex with his wife he couldn't retain new information and his memory of the day before was temporarily wiped he was diagnosed with get it transient global amnesia a poorly understood condition that can be linked to sex A man got amnesia 10 minutes after having afternoon sex with his wife, temporarily wiping his memory of the previous day and rendering him unable to retain new information. He was 66, too. And apparently in the article, it happened once before. The good news is he retained it all back. But most cases have been reported in men in between 50 and 70. Wow. Uh-oh, I'm kind of a, we don't they don't know exactly what causes TGA, but it has been linked to several activities including physical exertion, immersion in cold or hot water, emotional stress, pain and sex. Okay, well that just summarizes all of our lives. <laughs> I mean, come on. We're all working lucky. out like we're all working out like fiends and taking hot and cold showers in emotional stress, pain, and yeah, and sex, of course. So, oh God, did that scare you when you heard it? I mean, it didn't scare me in the end. I think it's totally rare. We're not meant to share this with you, but it was so bizarre to me that it happened on, he couldn't remember the day before when he 
remarried his wife. How how depressing. It's insane. I just think that I could I can't even imagine having sex and then it wiping my my memory. I think that's the ultimate compliment. Like the sex is so good it made me forget who I am. That's goals right there, okay? Goals. Yes. <laughs> it's also it's a way of kind of getting out of if you forget your anniversary, like, oh, baby, you were just so good that <laughs> it made me forget my, our anniversary. And then send them the article for wh- what's it called again? I forgot already. Be- uh, right. See, the sex is so good. That's why it made me forget the name of the disease. <laughs> Teddy says, I had an ex that I wish gave me that disease. Yeah, exactly. We all do where we can forget the last two years um, what else is anyone? He got some of that. Blake says, hi, Blake. He got some of that geriatric good, 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 and temporarily lost his mind. Exactly. Mr. TGS was getting it in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's nuts. There's all, I've heard of a few other conditions that can happen during sex that besides the obvious of just yeah. having a heart attack and dying, but there's oh. some weird conditions that can happen at times. And the good news on this one, it's hugely rare. Okay. I just And he got his memory back. So mm-hmm. let's not get crazy about this. But I just thought, wow, I have to talk about this because it's like so wild. Yeah, that's cool. And like I said, I'm I'm aiming for it. So when when Joe forgets who you are, you, you watch out for it, okay? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, James wrote in to us on our Discord channel. James, I hope you don't mind that we are reading this, but we thought we'd just, you posted on our Discord channel. You guys can join our Patreon member page. We call it our Tags Sex Pause Community, where you get some extra special perks like last night's deeper conversation that we have once a month and so boy Cody fun. we had a lot of fun on that we were talking oh yeah yeah we did kind of we had a smaller group last night but it was a round ramen of sharing what we're looking forward to this like currently in our sexual happiness and particularly with pride coming up we were all, we're all in different spaces even from a month ago wouldn't you say Cody many oh, yeah. of us yeah and so it's a really good a conversation that we have called deeper but a lot of other perks and like our text discord community where we just post comments in there all week long and continue the fun you can go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast and grab a tear you will be supporting tags podcast well james wrote in there on this memorial day weekend to everyone that uh, I recently had this friend that doesn't live in Chicago where James lives, but out in the suburbs and he's trapped in a relationship. Oh, he needs that amnesia thing that we were just talking about. (laughs) He's trapped in a relationship and he won't stop texting me. And I know that Steve, meaning me, was talking Mm -hmm. about this at one point on the show where somebody just incessantly was texting me. I have a story on that, but people who kind of text too much or send a lot of texts for about three or four days straight, he sends me messages from the wee hours in the morning till midnight, and it's just nonstop, and it's the same thing over and over. Make it stop. Okay, James, we hear you all the way over here in LA. Well, the first thing that I thought about this is how good of a friend is this person? Did he say yeah. that already? I had this friend because if somebody's going through something, you definitely want to be there for them, right? Cody, James what do you said? James just put in the chat that he only met this person one time. Oh, hell to the end. To the, <laughs> oh, man. Let me just take my script out of here now because I was going to talk about. I, I have no notes for this now. What am let I me, to do? Well, then we're going off the cuff. We're going to revise the situation here. <laughs> hell no. And the, so we're getting a little bit more information in real time, listeners. And he, James says he is a bottom. Yo. Okay, let's not be mad at bottoms here. No, he is a bottom. Okay, he's a bottom and so is his husband. Well, there's the problem there. (laughs) Damn it. 
two bottoms don't make a right, just like two tops. They got married fast and he's trapped there in bottom land. Yeah, that's a bad place Girl. to be. There's stamp, Damon says. <laughs> Teddy said that's called lesbianism. <laughs> Go on they were show. really confused on, on that marriage. <laughs> what <laughs> how many Teddy's cats do they have <laughs> yeah i think they're registered at home depot no, let's pull sure. out all the lesbian the jokes on. yeah <laughs> oh, for sure uh, he also said that james also said that he tells them everything about tell he tells james everything about their relationship and then sends james nudes what do you oh, think about that God. James, you always get yourself in these situations with these guys. <laughs> I just like his messages and move on, and he still sends more texts. Oh, you literally give him the thumbs up, and that's it. Yeah, I, you must have made some impression on him. Block. People are saying block, that block. Is, that was, was going to be my advice. <laughs> yeah. Or For whatever it, reason, you. I know you're an animal guy, James, and you pr clearly... You have another situation you told us on our Discord channel before of a guy that really confides in you. But I would just say you don't want to let people run all over you, right, yeah. Cody? And oh, take sure. advantage because you are a really good listener because you don't want that to be the, the name of the game. And this guy is clearly taking advantage of, of you and your phone. What were you going to say, Cody? question for James. Yeah. I, I James, do you want to have sex with this man and his husband? We're waiting in. We are waiting in real at, time. At, <laughs> in real time. James is the only available top in 20 miles radius, according to Teddy. Done. The answer. He no, he does not want to have sex with this man and his husband. Okay. So my advice is to block him completely. Or you could be honest. You could be completely honest with him and say, set up the parameters of the relationship. I know you're a nice guy. So if you want to say, I'm not really comfortable talking to you about your about your husband, and especially about these news that you were sending me, I had somebody in a relationship. And once I set up that boundary, they never crossed it again, unfortunately. They also stopped texting me. So that might also be a, a solution for you to let you let them know that you're not interested in them sexually. So I say, set up all the boundaries that you need to set up because you only met this person one time. You were not trying to, if you were trying to have sex with them, it would be a completely different story. I would say set up the boundaries to where you only need to call me when it's time for me to come and hit it. Okay. That would be my advice, but that's, I love El Ray saying, I uh, thank you. El Ray says, tell him to, to join the podcast for advice. Yeah. If Ooh. you want hand, <laughs> pass the buck over James to us. <laughs> Not to Cody and Steve, but to Tag The podcast. drama girl. <laughs> no, but tell them to, you know, the, that, and we would be happy to give brutal but construction, constructive advice to this guy. I would, for sure, because I, it sounds like when you have one person that you just go back and forth to, like he's going back and forth to James. I think Teddy said it best in our chat. It's called emotional dumping it's mm -hmm. it's abusive behavior mm -hmm. um that he's but he's really soundboarding it he's not really asking for keen advice he's simply every minute posting something to james and that's not helpful i think you need to really if you really want advice on what to do I, we could tell you a long time ago, you made that mistake years ago when you were a bottom and he was a bottom. And why didn't you wake up and realize two bottoms don't make a right? That's I don't right. know. What, yeah. But now you're in the situation now and don't he's using a nice guy like James as a sounding board, but it's not working. And it's just, yeah, it's so wrong. And don't give him our number. <laughs> yes, exactly. Give him the number to a good therapist. Yeah, Teddy says, easy, send him this episode when it comes out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What were you going to say, Cody? Oh, no. I was just going to read what Damon said. Hey, Steve. Okay. Oh, okay. Tags, podcast, Instagram. Okay. She... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Daddy also says it sounds like he should get a therapist because 
uh, obviously he needs some support in his relationship. So come yeah. to us for some advice. Come go to the therapist. So I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teddy says, this epi episode is so interactive. I know you guys are giving us fuel for the fire. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Keep telling us in the chat as well. Don't forget about our original question. How are you approaching Pride Month or Pride? We realize Pride isn't always celebrated in the month of June, wherever you are at, but it is summertime and it is officially Pride Month. So let us know. We'll read them off throughout the hour, the rest of the hour, actually. What topic do you want to go to next? Because I think, Cody, I'm going to let you decide. <clears throat> Well, we we've been trying one. to get this. Yeah, we've been trying to get to this uh, comics thing for a while. Okay, then let's do it. Yeah, because you want to get it off your roster. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to delete it. <laughs> uh, th this is great. We waited so long on this topic that now they've actually put it into one article, and it says yeah. it started off by why transphobic comics—they're calling them at the Advocate transphobic comics like bill maurer ricky gervais and bill chappelle are unfunny dinosaurs from um viewers so i'll just read you a little bit of this it's the person writing this says it's the fifth article i had to write about this subject i've written them individually for dave chappelle ricky gervais and bill maurer but thanks to auspicious timing i can now write one to cover all three because they all decided to suck to suck within a couple of weeks of each other. The article is talking about Gervais's recent Netflix special featuring the classic bathroom predator trope that everybody's talking about. That did you hear that one? What Ricky Gervais apparently yeah. says in his current well, I special. Read it. I didn't watch it. Yeah. So in a different article, Rich Ricky talks about he's pro trans, however, if he talks literally about the the bathroom situation and if they have a dick going at, in the bathroom he he likens it to what if a rape happens in a bathroom and he actually uses the rape when in reality there have been no incidences of rape from a trans person to a hetero person in fact mm -hmm. who's getting raped Mostly are trans people, and who's getting yep. attacked more is the trans community. So Absolutely. he was way off in that joke. We all know about Chappelle and his, but recently Bill Maurer. To me, the two that are of that I take, I get upset with are Ricky and Bill Maurer mm -hmm. because Bill Maurer really did this whole thing at the end of his show. It, some of it was funny and interesting he did this whole thing on the amount of time that re in recent years uh that people have be turned out to be gay and trans okay. and he did a trajectory over several years and he said at this rate and in the year 2028 everybody is going to be gay and it was Hopefully. it was actually it was really <laughs> i know right we can only hope it was actually really funny the way he posed it but the way his his whole he came off as an angry white man in the oh, end. For sure. And why do you, do you care? And just like I told at the beginning of the show about Olivia, somebody that went to my friend's restaurant, who is because he says, "How do you know who you are when you are a child? You get told what to do and what to do." I'm sorry, maybe when I was a kid or when you were a kid, Cody, we didn't have the resources of the, we didn't know who we were. Yeah. But the kids of today well, we were like, shamed for who we were, basically. Right. And I didn't ever feel like I could come out and be loud and proud. Yeah. I was I did a lot of performing, but I didn't feel like I could. But the kids of today have different you can't compare it to. And like I just told the story of Olivia who is 11 years old and is a trans boy, but was going in drag and wants to still be called Olivia, give them more credit than they are like your, your friend that's raising kids. I just think, yeah, we need to give kids more credit and they are sounding like dinosaurs to me, some of these comedians, oh, and they yes. should really give this up. I, some of it's funny. I actually watched the whole Bill Maurer monologue and some parts of it were funny and he had some points to what he was trying to say mm -hmm. but his overall messaging of kids don't know who they are and why are we allowing them to dictate and at this rate 
he's saying people, his whole ultimate argument was kids. And if you put them on hormones, may we don't, this is all relatively new, but the thing is a lot of parents don't put them, their kids on hormones. Yep. They are actually just letting them live out as the other gender. So mm-hmm. they're not going to that extreme measures until exactly. they are of an age. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts, Cody? I say to these people that worry about kids not knowing about their gender, to look at trans icons like Janet Mock, Laverne Cox, the people of that stature in nature. They, if Have you read Janet Mock's book before? No, you gave it to me and I need to read it. I admit, I'll put it on my summer read. Okay, okay. It's amazing. Yes, Janet okay. Mock, she, they, she didn't start hormones, I think, until a little bit till late in her later teens and she's never looked back. And I think that when you are younger and you have to just make these decisions, I agree that maybe you shouldn't be on hormones immediately. Like when you're a kid, you don't necessarily go through puberty until you're what? 14. I don't correct. Yeah. I don't don't anything about kids either. I I don't have any kids. (laughs) Um, So I think that the more self-discovery that they're allowed to do, the the better off it'll be. As far as Bill Maher and Ricky. Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle, I think that they're all just afraid of losing their stature in this world. They're at the top of the totem pole, and they are really worried about not being top dog anymore. And it's showing in their comedy. They're punching down at people and things that they have no idea about. And they're telling jokes that have no consequence and no no basis in reality. Who wants to rape Ricky Gervais? Nobody. He is not attractive. Right. Okay? <laughs> and I like Bill Maher a lot more when he was dating strippers and had more progressive views. Yeah. My opinion on that. Yeah, I think they don't realize the effect that a lot of their analysis or their how they come off particularly the la- the latter two i watched the dave chappelle special and i honestly we talked about it before i didn't find it as offensive as many people did and he actually has a close ally in the trans community that he's friends with that he ran a lot of this by so to me i don't see it as bad but i do with ricky and bill and i was and i'm big fans of both of them that's the thing i still will continue to be look after their entertainment on some level but as they get crankier and crankier with this stuff when they ignore the fact that there's so much hatred going on and some of the things that they say can really affect the trans community towards violence and so many horrible things that i don't think they realize what they're doing i think they're looking at it as it's ridiculous it's this we don't get it but you don't need to get it and there's so many other things going on right now that you could poke fun at and humor don't do it to the community like you said punch down that is the statistics of violence towards that community mm-hmm. are astronomical community punched yeah. down to the lowest common denominator community that you can find that is really the most in danger. Yes. Right. That's when it's pathetic and come on, if you yeah. call yourself a real com- community and you could find so many other things. I know Bill Maher likes to say it's the elephant in the room and, and we have to talk about this stuff, but he's, Some of it was funny, but I think he's not looking at the other side of it, the detriment that he's doing to the community. And it's only going to fuel uh, angry, uh, even more right wing white kids that are going to think it's okay to eliminate the trans community. That's That's what it's going to do. He's not even looking at it from that standpoint. So, yeah, I agree with you. And since we've been talking about self discovery, maybe. Bill Maher and Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais need to open a book and actually learn a little something about trans people and actually raise awareness, use their platform for some good instead of denigrating these people and, and aligning them to the, to the sidelines. So Absolutely. Well stated. Anything we want to read before we move on to cruising at the gym and cruising in general? <laughs> <laughs> uh Damon says, funny thing is, Mayor, 
Bill Mayer is famously marriage phobic and kid phobic. He he should sit this one out. Yes, and thank also you. He says that Bill Maher and Ricky Gervais are cranky old men, which we already we <laughs> totally agree with. And Teddy asked, "Did I date Bill Maher?" And I told him he's the worst, but a good friend worked. A, a good work friend did so oh <laughs> really okay no not not really it okay. was a joke saying okay he was, he was saying i'm a stripper and i said no one of my girlfriends at the strip club did so <laughs> <laughs> exactly when we liked him a little bit more yes yes well there's a recent article on qwerty written by jamie valentino that got my attention okay well the article, My Hot Vac Summer, Why Cruising at the Gym is the Worst and Best Thing Ever. Nothing prolongs my gym workout, he writes, more than another hot guy hitting the weights. Every glance inspires an additional bicep curl. I've shifted from chest to back day to, back day to stay with within a cruising proximity. I'm not alone. Most of my gay friends who frequently exercise express the sentiment. Many of them have at least one gym crush. That's true. <laughs> you know that person whose gym routine you mostly ingrained into memory and tried to re replicate within your own schedule. You find yourself questioning where the hell they are when they're missing at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> They typically only work out in the evening on Mondays and Wednesdays. That is until a new, therefore better, handsome stranger shows up. Yeah. Oh, I can totally. Well, then he writes, entered the pandemic, two pandemics later, and people worldwide experienced the tragedy and horniness like never before. He talks about restrictions and gyms reopening, mass mandates dropped. We all scrambled to prepare for the hot vac summer. It's no wonder the while well, he talks about the bidet company tushi had mm -hmm. a whole campaign and i think that's hilarious um i i was always experiencing a messy breakup with my boyfriend who lived who i lived with another negative side effect for countless couples caused by covid but essentially he talks about the awkwardness that can happen about meeting people in the gym those crushes and what did you get from this article when you read this first because uh, um, Cody, when you first saw it, well, I don't have any. Gym. I only have my boyfriend as a gym crush, so that's 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 my my reality right now. So, <laughs> um, but went back single. I used to pick up a lot of guys at the gym. <laughs> I remember this one time. Do you, should I tell us? Is yeah. it story time right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we were working out, and he. I mean, I finished my workout. He followed me into the locker room and we I went to go shower. This was pre-COVID. So I was showering at the gym and he, I went to go into this, the shower stall. He fo followed me into the shower stall and we were playing around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we actually took it back to his apartment and finished things up. And it was a, a very all sweaty very and all. It was gr it was great. So that's really hot. Yeah. I mean, well, it's harder to go up to people. Good for you for because a lot of it's eye contact. Oh, one yeah. of the things Cruising they mentioned art form. One of the things they mentioned the cock blocking devices known as the AirPods. I love that cock blocking device. Totally. Because you never know when and now they're all earbuds. So you can't really tell who is, you know, it's hard to tell. Yeah. But I do think it's a little bit tricky. I know when I'm, I work out in a gym in my building where mm -hmm. there's one guy that I had a crush on before I talked about him on the show, but I think he turned out to be straight. We talk all the time. I really have not been in that culture for a while, except about a year ago, I was in here in LA in Gold's Gym Hollywood is notorious for porn stars, for OnlyFans guys, for actors. It's a huge gym it's amazing but you kind of have to get your game on you have to walk into the gym with confidence because the minute you walk on that gym floor eyes are all you just have to be on show it's time. a little in, it's <laughs> showtime so i use a little bit of what we learn on this show whenever i go into that gym and the last time i was there there was a guy that i probably wouldn't have totally been my type but he's okay. cute enough he kept 
throughout the whole week that I wear, I bought like a two week membership. He mm-hmm. kept tapping me and he would look and say, Hey, how you doing? And I would like <laughs> smile. Oh, Again, oh my, with, that's with forward. Earbuds on. I would just, I, would, I know that if I gave him a little bit more time a day, I could have got, you know, gotten together with him. Some shadow time. Him. Yeah. But the old days for me back in the day would mean flirting with somebody and then cruising in the shower room and having fun, which I've had plenty of fun in a locker room, shower room scene, which can be totally hot. Now I think they patrol them a little bit too much and I would be oh, nervous yeah. to do that unless I was in some remote <laughs> part of the country, for example. But uh, I think now I would be more inclined to just meet somebody and who knows, maybe we have a co-host Lincoln who's mm-hmm. at a gym in Hell's Kitchen where we li- where our, I'm in New York. And I might go there and see who I could, because you know Lincoln's gym at Temple has yeah. got plenty of the gays in there. Oh, but yeah. I'm gonna have to get that same mojo on of, okay, get it together before you and action type of thing. And I still think it's still showtime, even even when even though I'm in a committed relationship, because. You still kind of want all the eyes on you, even though you're not going to do anything or you're not going to flirt back, but still. All eyes on me. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Have you, so the, the, the kids are going on and on about Okay, the go, go, the go. Steam, the steam room. Have read. you ever, have you? <laughs> Never have I ever. Go ahead, read. <laughs> <laughs> They're going on and on and on about the steam room. What, do you have any steam room stories? The last steam room story I had that was pretty hot was 24 Hour Fitness, which is in Madison Square Park. And I went on a, I want to say it was a Saturday evening, about 6.30 p.m., not very busy, got my workout on and thought, I'm going to go into the steam room after this. Went in there, sat down, and there was a guy sitting across from me. Now, mind you, where I sat... I had a view of where the person would come and open the door. He was sitting across from me. (laughs) This young twink of a boy, I'll say, got came up and I because he was looking at me, had enough nerve to come up to me. I dropped the towel and started blowing me in the steam room. But as he's blowing me, I'm like panicked because I'm looking for a shadow that's going to open that door at any second. And I was more worried about that. But no, I was hard enough. I didn't get nervous enough. I kept it hard. And he was so happy blowing me in there. And it was very hot. I wanted to reciprocate. But I think time somebody was coming in and we he, we got out. He actually jerked off and came. <gasps> yeah. And so I didn't even get to blow him because he was so oh hot and bothered my. on sucking me off. And then I just put the tail back and I was like, hmm, 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 hmm. all right, let me just go about my day. And, but it was really hot and, and yeah, I loved it. Um, Ooh. Yeah. The steam room can be very hot. I'm going to leave yeah. it at that. And 24 hours, we have, yes, they've all kind of closed down in the last several years. Blake says it was fun watching the guys at 24 Hour Fitness in WeHo because you know everyone's gay. Yes, I know. And I would I would go to this one here in WeHo prior to them closing, sadness. Mm-hmm. Do you have any steam room stories, Cody? I mean, I have. I mean, I don't know. Is the door really. shut be over there? <laughs> it is. Nobody's, nobody's coming in. <laughs> okay. But I don't. I, I have frequented the steam room basic when I was single back in the day. Long, long, long time ago. Maybe like 10 years ago. Okay. Um, but I would just when go in When you were a there. young pup. Exactly, <laughs> darling. I would go in and, and you know, I would have my regulars that, that would always be in there with me. Regulars. Yeah, I mean, once you get once you get familiar with some people in there, then you, you it's a friendly it's a friendly environment. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I would like to have like the gym that I have now and a gym like that because the reality is you do have to get a lot. You have to get it together to look somewhat decent. I feel. And to get in that mindset that you're going to be flirting, sometimes you just want to, these days, I just want to work out. But I do like the whole, I mean, let's face it, you're sweating, the muscles are out, you're building up testosterone, so your hormones are going. What better place to meet up? 
grab a protein shake and grab a cock. <laughs> I mean, where's the protein shake coming out of again? I don't. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What protein are we talking about here? <laughs> exactly. All right, we've got about a minute to go through our favorite I know. segment, straight up gay porns. And this week, they asked the question: Out of these twenty-five porn stars some of them are only fans as well who took the best photo or video and it's our job to vividly describe because we're an audio podcast which was your favorite cody what was your favorite my favorite was jet wayne mainly because he's in one of my favorite positions the side doggy style oh okay? i saw that so he's laying on a bed and it, it has this gorgeous piece of artwork behind him and he's in, <laughs> in that position which consists of laying on your side with your ass in the air and your chest kind of up and you can see the face too and it's the perfect position because you can play with the nipples and the penis and the anything you need to play with really and you can kiss which is the most important part and you have a, just a gorgeous view of the ass and his ass is amazing so chef kiss to you jet wayne love it mine goes to elijah zane who i've seen in some videos recently maybe oh. because of cyber socket he's got this cool blonde kind of fro going on right cody yeah he's so cool. and he's in this video on if you go to his twitter account he says given cheese because he's totally like smiling over smiling and but it's so cute he's got a pearl texas he must be from texas necklace on beautiful nipples Ooh. he's got the hugest cock ever and low-hanging balls i love his cock it's so beautiful and for all you feet lovers, he's showing a little bit of his feet there, which are very beautiful and sexy. And just the biggest, hugest grin, like you know he's going to be a lot of fun. I've seen him pound in videos, and he seems to be making every boy happy. And oh, yeah. So I want to be one of those boys. And so that's why he gets my vote. What are the nice. people saying, Cody? The people are saying... James is saying Idolo, who I always vote for. And I was like, you I, cannot, do. I can't I vote for Idolo again this week. So, but I saw him, James, and I was I was gobsmacked. So I, I'm glad you brought him up. Daddy is saying Gab Bra Gabe Bradshaw because of that ass. Daniel said Micah West. Blake says Robert Royal, who is another one that I saw. And I was like, yes, God. Uh, <laughs> because I want to know what, he, what he's watching that that makes him so hard. So I, I need to know what, it's all in, in just in, uh, because I'm inquisitive, that's why. <laughs> and Teddy says, <laughs> Kylan, please. And Damon says, Spoon. And uh, <laughs> Blake said, it's probably a video of himself. That's what he's watching. <laughs> and apparently, according to Teddy, who joined me at Cyber Socket Awards, that he was right next to us, meaning- Who, Robert Royal or? Uh, I believe Elijah Zane is oh, who yes, he's talking because about. He dates Raheem Shabazz. Well, oh, that I did see them. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And by the way, Raheem in person looks stunning. Oh, oh well, I think I was so taken Ooh, by Raheem. Ooh, I, gotta quit <laughs> <laughs> I did that recently too. I was like, did I just drool? Did I just? I, oh, this, I gotta clean this seat now. Oh no! <laughs> exactly. Um, that's crazy that he was there next. But I think I was so enthralled with Raheem that I lost it. And so, yeah, these boys. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. Thank you Good for playing on this one. Continue giving us your feedback, particularly if you're listening to this as an audio podcast when it comes out. It's episode 370. James, we want to get that guy on the show. Send him our way to give some advice. We give you advice, solicited or unsolicited. <laughs> you can always DM us at Tags Podcast on Instagram and send us your relationship or sex conundrums. We are here for you. And this has been so much fun. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride, everybody. Follow my co-host. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching or his personal account at Mista Maurice. And follow us at Tags Podcast. And in the meantime, you guys, continue having, dreaming, hot. imagining about hot, oh, gay, gay, sex. sex. Yeah, yes. I was early. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs>